Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online. And this is Saturday. This is our Saturday weekly service. And we are speaking from Ecclesiastes. Sometimes when God puts us in the fire, the fiery furnace, when God allows trouble and trials and issues and setbacks, all kinds of challenges and frustrations happen in our lives, he is doing something. He, it is a hand of God working, purifying that gold, purifying that silver. So let us get into the word and see what God has to say to his people. Amen. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck that which is planted, a time to kill, mm, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, that means tear, rip, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know. There is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. <clears throat> I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that man should fear before him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of man, that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. For that which befalleth the sons of man befalleth beasts. Every, even, excuse me, even one thing befalleth them, as the other dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above beasts, for all is vanity. All goeth unto one place, all are dust, and all turn to dust again. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm not going to keep going. I could read the whole chapter, which I almost did. But I want to share with you that sometimes we put a lot of store in things. We put a lot of importance on things. And what God is trying to show us is don't get too serious about stuff. Don't get too attached to things. Don't get too attached to people. Don't get too attached to anything in your life because everything can be a fleeting moment in a second. A car crash, getting fired from a job, the banking system closing down and all your money is gone, poof, in a puff of air, 
in a puff of smoke. You can't depend on anything in this world. But one thing you can depend on, that we are all going to be raked through the coal in life. We are all going to go through. We are all going to have problems. We are all going to have setbacks. We will all be sick from one time to another, whether it's major or minor. We will all have financial issues, major or minor, long term or short term. But the bottom line is, the one thing you want to know that you are is blessed in God's hands, blessed in his favor. Because no matter what life throws at you, with God, you can do all things. With God's grace, you can handle it. Yes, you can. It may seem like you're at the end of your rope. It may seem like you're at the verge of just saying, hasta la bye-bye. I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'm done. And then God will give you another shot in the arm. He'll give you another burst of strength and you'll know that you can go five more miles you don't have to collapse where you're standing you can keep moving because of the strength god gives you he strengthens us on the inner man when uh one of the disciples was crying out to god about the thorn in his side what was god's response can you imagine whatever that thorn was whether it was a person whether it was money issues, whether it was his own flesh, whether it was temptation messing with him constantly, whether it was a trick bag or a hang up that he had been struggling with for years, whatever it was, God did not pity him. God didn't even comfort him. He just basically said, my grace is sufficient. So, <laughs> Sometimes when we want a hug from God, as Ecclesiastes says, there's a time to refrain from embracing. There are times when God doesn't hold us. There are times when God does not comfort us. He may use another ta tactic. That's the word I'm looking for. He may use another uh, modus operandi. But the bottom line is, Whatever he does is good. Even if he just points his finger and says, yeah, you're right, you're wrong. Even if he just does that, it's a good thing that you can hear from God. See, when you look at your life, you have to remember you are blessed when you're in his hands. You are blessed when you're on his mind. You are blessed being in Christ Jesus, being filled with the Holy Ghost, being loved by God, God being mindful of you. You are blessed. So no matter what's going on in your life, there may be times when it makes you downright angry. It may be times when you get at a loss and you're trying to figure out, am I being judged by something I did? What did I do? What did I do? I don't remember. What did I say? Where did I go? I don't remember. Lord, let me know if this thing is judgment. Are you judging me? Are you casting judgment on me? Why am I going through this? Well, sometimes it's basically the bottom line. <sighs> the fiery furnace. The furnace of affliction. <clears throat> the Lord lights us I'm being funny now, so just allow me to be a little uh, lenient. Give me leniency, cause I'm I'm uh, stretching my my dramatization here. Imagine the Lord lighting a cigarette lighter, mm -hmm. and He aims it at you, and He says, "Time for you to fry. I gotta work something about it. I don't like what I'm seeing over there. It's gotta come out. Let me burn that baby out." And you're. Because life has got you on the burner. Life is cooking your behind. It's baking your behind. It's frying your behind. And you feel like you're dying from the frying. But God is doing a good work 
no matter what it feels like, it's a good work. If God allows it like he did Job, it's good. All things work together for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Do you love God? Are you called according to his purpose? Some of you, if you were really, really honest, would have to say, hmm, I don't even really know God, so how can I love him? Well, that's a good thing to say. Now you're being real. See, God can deal with honesty. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So stay real with that. And keep asking God to manifest himself to you so that you know you're loved by God. Because once you know you're loved by him, oh, you automatically have love for him. Automatically. So don't lie and say, I love the Lord when you don't know what you feel. Just be real. God will deal with you so, he says in his word. <clears throat> No matter what you're going through in life, whether it's up or you're going down, no matter what, to the pure, the pure in heart, that is, to the pure, I will show myself pure. To the merciful, and it pays to be merciful, he says, I will show myself merciful. Hmm. But then here's the other part you don't want to play with. But to the froward, I will show myself froward. Don't mess with me. So anyway, I had to add the little don't mess with me part. But anyway, so listen, life is going to happen. Life is there for several reasons. To draw you close to God so that you get to know him. Help you grow up. That is maturing you. Strengthen you on the inner man. And strength comes from what? Resistance. Resistance happens in life. Then another one that happens, when you are honest with yourself and God, healing. God wants to heal. So there's a lot of inner healing. And with inner healing comes revelation, which brings more inner healing, which brings physical healing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Which also can bring deliverance. God wants to set the captive free. Now, there are times when I don't know if you ever saw this movie. Let me share this. It just popped in my head. There are times when you have to allow yourself horrible pain, total anguish, in order to be able to be set free. But it's part of what you, it's a part you have to play in this. In this movie, a man was trapped. He was trapped on the side of a mountain. He had fallen to a certain uh, level and he had this, I forgot what happened, but something got him so tied up and a storm was coming. Something was getting ready to happen. That would be sure death for him. Now he had to decide how badly do I really want to live? And I ask you that question. How badly do you really want to live? All right. And this man wanted to live so bad. I'm going I'm to share two, two scenes with you. These two different movies. One man, he wanted to live so bad that he literally had to cut his leg off. No Novocaine. I can't even imagine the pain. He had to amputate his leg. It wasn't, it wasn't full of gangrene. It was caught up and he couldn't get loose unless he cut it off. He had to sever the tie in order to live. What ties do you have to sever in order to really 
live. Some of your ties are to the past. Some of your ties are to people you're angry with from your past. Some of your ties are to roots of bitterness from your past. Some of your ties are to unforgiveness. What must you cut off from you? Some of your ties or to unequally yoked relationships that you should have never gotten hooked up in in the first place. And now they're turning and biting your behind. So this man has to cut off his leg in order to free himself so he can live. Woo! Another movie I saw, a man had to cut off his hand or his arm in order to get free in order to live, to survive. They both made it. By the skin of their chinny chin chin, they both made it. Now, my question to you is, what are you willing to cut out of and cut, cut out of your life? What are you willing to cut off of your flesh? What activities are you willing to cut out, period? in order to truly experience life, real life, real love of God, real purpose, to know what your calling is, crystal clear, to receive inner healing, freedom, deliverance. What are you willing to cut off? Do you have reservations? Well, you know, just give me a minute. I'm working on this one here, you know. I had this for a long time, and you know, we you know, we've been running buddies for a long time. Me and this sin over here. It's my pet sin right here, buddy. Yeah. Don't mess with this. I'll get to it in a minute. You may not have a minute. What are you willing? Are you willing? That's the question. Are you willing to forsake all for God? Are you? Truly, if you're not, and you know it, say it, confess it, ask God to rearrange your heart, fill you with his Holy Spirit to change your nature so that your desires line up with the desires of God for your life and for your character. Now. Let's move on to Ecclesiastes. Mm. Or did I just read it? I know there were two I was going to read. Let's see, which one did I just read? All right, let's move on to Isaiah 48. Bear with me, y'all. I'm 66. What can I say? All right, now, we are going to read. Hmm. This is where God talks about our nature, the sin nature in us, all of that. I'm going to read until I feel like the Lord says stop. So we're starting at verse 1. All right. Now, the reason I like to read a lot of word is not to bombard you with information. God said in his scripture, my word will not return to me void. So even for some of you who don't read the word that often, some of you who don't understand it that well, whatever is spoken into your spirit will bear fruit. It will germinate. You may not know how it's doing it, just like you don't know how that palm tree is growing. You don't know how that palm tree is strengthening. But it's happening under the soil in that deep, long root. But it's happening. So trust that God's word is doing something in your spirit. And since many of you may not pick up the word no more than once or twice a week, I want to make sure that you get some good helpings of word when I'm speaking on Saturdays and Tuesdays. Now, verse 1. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of waters of Judah which swear by the name of the Lord and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, mm. nor in righteousness. Mm. For they call themselves of the holy city 
and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass because I knew that thou art an obstinate and thy neck, let me read that again because I was looking at the word to make sure I pronounced it correctly. I'm picky that way. Because I knew that thou art obstinate and thy neck is an iron of sinew and thy brow brass. Hmm. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee, lest thou shouldest say, Mine idol have done them, and my graven image and my molten image have commanded them. Thou hast heard, see all this, and will not ye declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They are created now and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, lest thou should say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, thou heardest not. Yea, thou knew not. Yea, from the time that thy ear was not open, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor from the womb. Now, let me stop there. That's all of us. All of us were transgressors from the womb. So this applies to all of us. For my name's sake, verse 9, will I defer mine anger? Mm -hmm, he's holding it back. For my praise will I refrain for thee, that I cut thee not off. Behold, thank God for Jesus. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee, in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory to another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called, I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Mine hand also have laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. All ye assemble yourselves and hear, which among them hath declared these things? The Lord hath loved him. He will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arms shall be on the Chaldeans. I even I have spoken, yea, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come near unto me, hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that thou hadst heard to my commandments. Read it again. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened unto my commandments. Then had thy peace been as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Okay, I'm not going to keep going on this because he's talking about all that we could have done, how much better life would have been. Well, thanks to Adam and Eve, it ain't going to happen. So all we can do is say our life can get better once we get in Christ Jesus and we begin to walk after his ways. The bottom line is, we were born in sin and shapen in iniquity, which means it's second nature to sin. It's second nature to do wrong. It's second nature to be suspicious, to be fearful, to be intimidated, to be intimidating, to be controlling, to be controlled, to worship man rather than God. It is second nature to do all of the above, whether it's sexual sin or financial sin or whatever kind of treachery is in our flesh. It's second nature. Nobody has to teach you to be evil. Nobody had to teach me. So the bottom line is what God is saying is whatever happens in our lives, when you put the two chapters together, whatever happens in our lives, 
We have to know that as we are here taking up space on the face of this earth, there is a purging process. There is a pruning process. There is cutting that needs to be done. There is surgery that needs to be done. There's healing that needs to be done. There's cutting away, cutting out, lifting up, bringing down, tearing, ripping, and healing. There's a time and a season for each one of these things happening in our lives, as Ecclesiastes said. So my question to you is, what season are you in? Do you recognize the season? Is it a season of correction? Are you in a season of spiritual growth? Pretty much all of us are on a daily basis. Are you in a season of cutting away, ripping, tearing, breaking, like the men that had to cut their leg and their hand off to survive? Like the shepherd that has to break the leg of the sheep, the bad sheep, yeah keep straying away and getting lost from the fold and he has to go and find them and catch them. And guess what he has to do? He has to break his leg purposefully. He strategically knows where and how. He knows it's going to hurt. He knows the poor baby is not going to be able to walk. And at that point, after the breaking happens, comes the carrying. We're in the arms of the Lord as he carries us because he had to do the breaking in order for us to survive in righteousness or we would be lost and die in sin. And he knows it. So there are times in our lives where there comes a breaking or crashing or destruction, pain, anguish, loss, suffering. Not because God is sadistic, not because he enjoys hurting you, but because he knows that this is a necessary evil to get the evil out of you. The evil we were born in, that was in our flesh. Oh my goodness, if you could just get life itself. Life is, life serves, serves God's purpose. If we could get that, Life serves God pur God's purpose so that we will serve his purpose at the end. We're not to uh, waddle through life meandering over here and meandering over there and we don't know where we want to go and we're just spinning around chasing our tail because we don't know what we're going to do with our lives. Well, God knows what we were born for. He knows what he put inside of us. And there are certain things that don't come up and out without heat. There are certain things that won't come up and out without a little bit of a beating. There are some things that won't come up and out without breaking and crashing. There's a time to rend and a time to heal. No matter how many ways God tears at us. He heals. No matter how many times he allows pain to enter into our lives, he delivers us. He delivers us out of all our troubles. But because of life, because of the purpose and the callings on our lives, God must allow pain. When Let me share this. My husband lost his eyesight a while before he and I started dating. I never let him live it down. Yeah, you wait till you went blind before you dated me. And you know, what you trying to say, Willis? But anyway, now, during that time where he lost his eyesight, he started having other health issues as well. And what I noticed is that he had a very quick wit. I mean, I loved his sense of humor, but there was a sharpness to it. And I knew that came from the world. I knew it. I recognized it. 
He didn't use it as an as a weapon, but there were times I could tell he could if he went all the way there. I was so glad he didn't want to use it on me. He would have hurt me deeply. He had that ability. But as time moved on and he had to suffer the loss of eyesight, and some of us, I hate to say it, some of us have to go through physical ailments to get to the spiritual gain. Oh, now what happened with him was during the time of the first two years of our marriage, we were going through to a lot of inner healing and deliverance services in the middle of the week at a church that we visited. And during this time, I noticed one night he was delivered in his sleep. He literally growled out. I don't know what it was. All I know is I was playing a deliverance video, and instead of the person on the video going through changes, he was in, his, in the depth of his sleep with a manifestation of deliverance. And I said, thank you, Lord. I don't know what it was, but thank you. I said, never return in Jesus' name. Well, after that, there was a tenderness, a sweetness. Now, there are times when pressure, you know how they say when you, to get oil out of an olive. You know, olive oil comes from olives, okay? But the process is not nice. The process is a crushing process. That's These are the times when we get angry with God. The seasons of crushing. The seasons of pressure. We don't like those seasons. Thank God they're temporary. But man, the crushing, the crushing, the crushing. Can you imagine if that olive had a sense of feeling? The pain it would be enduring. But what comes out of it? The anointing oil of God. The oil that comes to cook and season and refresh in the foods. Oil for the skin and hair. Oil that does so many beautiful purposes that accomplishes so much good in people's lives in so many ways can only come from the crushing. There's good in you that God planted himself. Good only comes from God, trust me. But listen to this. The good has to be pressed out of you. Some of it has to be forced out of you. Some of it has to be squeezed out of you like lemon juice, lemon and lime. Some of it has to be beaten out of you like tenderizing a good piece of steak. I mean, there are times when your tender heart comes from life's butt whoopings. And then you learn to love. And you love in a whole different level because you've suffered enough pain to get it. Somehow it clicks. You get it. Well, see, God in all his wisdom, in all his love, he knows what it takes for each and every one of us. I pray all the time. Not all the time I pray. My point is when I, I ask this question all the time, God, please don't let my heart be hardened. Don't let me be stubborn and stiff-necked. Don't let me fight against you. Now, I'll give you a quick example. Last week, <sighs> this is simple, nothing deep. It's an everyday thing. I was supposed to go to the hospital to do chaplain work. Well, girlfriend missed quite a few weeks there. And girlfriend didn't feel like going this week either. I was not feeling in the spirit. I wasn't feeling anointed. I wasn't feeling, uh, uh, I just wasn't feeling it. Let's put it like that. I was in my flesh. So I had enough sense though to ask the Lord. And I kind of didn't want to ask him because I kind of figured I'd know what I was going to hear. So I asked him, I thank God that I even get answers from him. That's a blessing. Even if it's not what I want to hear, it's still a blessing. So here I am asking God. Some of you need to do this at times. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is it going to make a big difference if I go? I don't see any miracles taking place, maybe except one. But I mean, after all that time, 
you know, let me know when I really need to go and when I don't, because I don't always feel like going. And this is one of those days I don't. So, uh, I kind of want to go lay back down. <laughs> is that okay? Because I got to go to church tonight. We're going to do this, this, this. And I don't want to be tired. Oh, I, I was negotiating. <laughs> so I asked the Lord to lead me to scripture. And he led me to scripture. And I, when I'm going to share what he said. But I did tell the Lord, I said, Lord, you're hitting below the belt. That's not fair. You do not fight fair. But the scripture was, pray the Lord of the harvest would send laborers into his vineyard. Oh, I didn't want to hear nothing like that. That went against my flesh. I wanted to chill, kick back, kick my feet up. And, and anyway. I got my little unhappy hips together and went. And I said, Lord, I sure hope you bless me for obedience sake because my heart is not in it. When I got there, I, I knew I was supposed to go. I knew it. I could tell by the response and the interaction with the people and some of what they needed prayer for and, and all of that. And the Lord gave me energy for the whole day. I didn't start feeling tired till the, the praise team rehearsal was over. And I said, wow, thank you, Lord. <laughs> now, what I say this to say, the reason I would rather obey God, kicking and screaming, digging my hands in the dirt, arguing, debating with him like my little pea brain could outsmart him is because I don't ever want him to turn me over to a reprobate mind. Girlfriend does not need to be in her own hands. No, I am too much of a dum diddy dum dum. I will screw my life up. I do not want to be left to my own devices. So even when I don't feel like it, even when I get a fat attitude towards the Lord for outsmarting me again, like anything else is going to happen other than that. I have to laugh at myself. I, I wonder sometimes if God's laughing at us when we just don't want to. Hmm. But he blesses obedience. He doesn't say you got to like it. Just do it. What are you willing? What are you not willing to? What has God told you he wants from you? What has he challenged you with? What is he working on in you that you're not willing to cut away? That you're not willing to walk away from? That you're not willing to divorce? What is he fighting in you tooth and nail to get you freed from so he can bless you on the next level but you can't take that with you to that next level and you won't let it go. What is it? Okay. Now that I have given you a royal chewing out, I did it in love, y'all. I ain't fussing at you. I got I to gotta deal with me in that same area all the time. So I just say this. Ask God to open your eyes to help you recognize what season is this, Lord, in my life? What are you working on inside of me? You may think it's a sexual sin. You may think that it is uh, a relationship issue with somebody in your family or somebody on your job. You may think it's oversensitivity and your feelings get hurt. You may think it's a financial setback and you think God's judging your behind and he's paying you back for something you did a long time ago. Listen, listen, ask God. Oftentimes when you think is that over there, what God is dealing with is this right here under your nose and you can't see it. You can't see it. You don't know what's going on because you don't know you like God knows you. Trust yourself in God's hands and start asking those new questions. Lord, what season in it is it? What season is going on in my life right now? Why is this going on? What are you working on in me? Huh? What do I need to let go of? He'll show you. He'll tell you if you really want to know. 
And he ain't going to waste his time if you ain't going to do nothing about it. And what I love about God is he knows if you're going to do anything about it or not. So oftentimes you ain't hearing because God knows you ain't going to be doing. Ask God to give you the willingness to do, to do whatever you need to do to get it right. Because the quicker you get it right, the quicker you move to the next level and the next level and the next level and the next level. Because the Bible says he takes us from glory to glory, from strength to strength. It's an ongoing process. Stay in the ride, y'all. Don't jump ship. Don't bail. Because I, in Isaiah, it says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. Love and trust him, y'all. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. God bless you.